Good morning all. Here we have a Mitsubishi Inverter Drive Freak Roll A500. And its model number is FR-A520-3.7K. And the problem with this drive is that we have an under voltage alarm. There's a circuit in here somewhere and we're going to have to find it that looks at the DC bus, it looks at the 300, thereabouts 300 volts DC. This is a, a line in of 220 volts AC three phase on rs &T. And we have a DC bus that we can measure on the N and the P slash P1 terminals. Uh, I'm gonna apply 220 volts AC three phase to rs &T got it underneath this piece of cardboard. Well, as you can see, uh, I'm going to get a little bit sidetracked here. I've already got it disassembled uh, and powered it up to see the actual alarm. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the display here. Now, maybe I should show you, but when the drive came in, it was set to the Japanese language. And I had to figure out, blindly, how to set this drive to English so that uh, this English speaking person could read the display. <laughs> so let me get the camera closer to that uh, parameter unit display and you can see what it says when we power it up. Now sometimes because I have the fan disconnected and this fan's bad, it don't spin no more, but it's a three wire fan it has a uh, five, uh, 24 volts DC in ground and it has a signal out to say that the fan's rotating and I have that disconnected. So sometimes the display comes up with the OH alarm, uh, but that's because of this right here being disconnected. And we're going to have to get a new three wire fan to complete the repair on this drive. The most important thing though is what's causing the under voltage alarm. Let me move the camera over here and we'll uh, take a look at that display when I fire up the line voltage. Alright, we're a little bit closer. This might be upside down, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's fire up the drive again. There we go, we can read that a little bit better. It says Mitsubishi. There we have our alarm. Alarm under voltage, 0, 0.00 hertz. So it looks like when you have an alarm, the drive is stopped at 0, 0 hertz, 0, 0.00 hertz. Okay, we're going to have to go in and find out the circuit that is looking at the DC bus. Let's power down. Now we're going to move the display the parameter unit, the control board, off of the power board. I got this piece of cardboard right here so that the control board doesn't short against the power board. Move these wooden blocks out of the way. Set this off to the side there. There's our power board. Somewhere on this power board is the circuit that monitors the DC bus. Let's look at the voltage of the DC bus right now to make sure that it is discharged. We do not want to get ourselves lit up today. <laughs> okay, this is the N terminal and this is the P and the P1 terminal. And we have six 5.9 volts DC. I'm going to discharge that a little bit more with the resistor. Okay, here's a resistor and I'm going to discharge that 5, near 6 volts, just to fully discharge that. That should be good. Can you all see those numbers? Okay, let's check it again. Alright, there we have 160, 180 millivolts. 
Almost 220 millivolts right there. That's good. We can we can call that pretty close to zero volts. Move that meter out of the way. I'm going to disconnect the line. First, let's make sure that we're disconnected from the wall. Got the line plug disconnected from the wall. We're going to undo these three wires right here. These are the RS and T terminals. There we go. Set that to the side. Run these screws down a little bit so they don't fall out onto the floor. Whenever I drop something on the floor around here, it takes me a long time to find it. <laughs> I think I got a hole underneath this bench that all the all the parts fall off onto. <laughs> okay. Let's disconnect the parameter unit from the control board. Right here's a ribbon cable, flexible ribbon cable that connects the control board to the power board. I'm going to undo it right here. There we go. Now we can set that control board off to the side. Let's turn this a little bit to the side here. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to focus in pretty close to the circuit because we're going to be looking at quite a few things in this area right here trying to figure out how the DC bus is being looked at to determine whether it's under voltage or over voltage or no voltage. <laughs> There's a circuit on here someplace. We're going to try to find it. What I look for when I'm trying to find a circuit that's looking at a high voltage, I look for a series group of resistors of significant value. Now here's an optocoupler and it has three, looks like 33 kilo ohm resistors in series into this optocoupler right here. So let's go see what the lead resistor is looking at. If it's looking at the DC bus, the plus bus, then that's our circuit. Okay, I've got my meter set to beep mode. So when we have continuity, that will Move this a little bit over so we can see the terminal board here because we're going to go look. This is plus bus right here. We're going to look at the terminal right there. Nope, it doesn't go there. What about bus ground? No, it doesn't go there. Now here's the RP terminal. That's pretty close. Yes, it's going to the RP terminal. That is our regenerative braking transistor output transistor or uh, IGBT and that goes to this PR terminal right here so this circuit is looking at whether or not the regenerative braking circuit is turned on or off so this is not looking at the DC bus we can ignore that for now here's another circuit over here of three series resistors and they are also 33 kilo ohms. Let's go see who that's looking at. It's going into this optocoupler right here. So we have three resistors. This is our lead resistor. Let's see what it's looking at. It looks like it comes over here to either R, S, and T terminals. There's R. Okay. So this circuit right here is looking at the line voltage. So that's not it. We can ignore that circuit right there. 
and I do not have any more strings of resistors right here. Here's our three current sense circuits. So that's not looking at the DC bus. This is interesting right here. We have an Agilent A7800. That's an isolated operational amplifier. Now normally those are used, like in the uh, eco drives of the Indramat, these are used to isolate the current sense from the uh, control circuit, from the microprocessor. But here we have three current sense circuits right here but on their own. I wonder what this is doing. I'm going to put the line voltage back on this circuit right here. We're going to see the voltages on these pins of the A7800 isolated operational amplifier. Now if this output is trashy, we're going to go ahead and replace it. I do not know if they're looking at the DC bus or not. The input side of this isolated operational amplifier. But if the output looks bad and we replace it and that alarm, under voltage alarm, does not occur again, this I see right here was looking at the DC bus and sending incorrect data to the microcontroller to indicate that the the bus was under voltage. Let me hook up the line again and we'll look at the output with the oscilloscope. Alright, let's turn our power board on by applying 220 volts AC3 phase to RS and T. And we're going to look at the A. 7800, also known and made by Hewlett Packard, the HCPL 7800. Now this is an exposed circuit. You have to be very, very careful that you don't get, get across any of these high voltages. Like for instance here is the isolated operational amplifier that we're going to look at. But right beside it to the IGBT down here is R, S, and T. We don't want to get across any of those uh, exposed terminals from the IGBT. That's the line coming in going to the three-phase bridge internal to that IGBT power module. So be very careful. We're going to look at the output here and in a little bit we'll get close to that oscilloscope right there and we'll look at the waveforms that I'm looking at. Let's take a look at VCC two and ground two. That's on the output side. There's two power supplies. One on the input side and one on the output side. The inputs VCC and ground are on, pin, are on pins one and four. The input to the operational amplifier, the isolated operational amplifier, the inputs are on pins two and three. Two being VN plus and three being VN minus. Now on the output side, you have an isolated from the input side power supply. VCC is on pin 8, that would be VCC 2, and ground 2 is on pin 5. Pin 6 and 7 are the outputs of the operational amplifier. It's differential output. So we have differential input, differential output. Uh, pin 6 is V out minus and pin 7 is V out plus. Let's look see if we're, we've got uh, our voltage right there on pin 8 to pin 4. Yes we have 5 volts and it looks good and clean. Let's go ahead and put our lead, our ground lead on pin 6 and our probe on pin 7. Cha, oh, that looks noisy. That looks noisy as all get out. I can't get on it. I'm trying to stay away from RSD. 
that looks bad. I think I'm going to replace that IC. Whether it's looking at the DC bus or not, I think it needs to be replaced. Okay, we're going to power down and put the scope closer to the, the camera there. Wait for that DC bus to discharge. And uh, you'll get to see what I saw. It looks horrible. <laughs> One of the rules in electronics, if it looks bad, it's probably bad. <laughs> okay. We'll let that DC bus die. Let it discharge. And then uh, we'll take a look at the waveforms of the output of that A7800 on the oscilloscope. There we go. I'm on it now. Can you see all that noise? That is horrible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that A7800 isolated operational amplifier. We'll put it semi back together and see if we get that under voltage alarm. Okay. There, we're off of it now power down and I'm going to replace that IC this is the IC we're going to remove now the easiest way to remove an IC is just to take a pair of side cutters here and cut the pins close to the IC if you can C cut. There we got it off the board. That's it right there. Okay. Now we take our soldering iron and remove the leads. Come here. Come here. From the vias from the pads of the of the circuit board come on, get over there there's four this side's hard to see give me a flashlight here that one okay I'm gonna get my headlamp on so I see what I'm doing kinda in the dark over here there we go okay let me take some solder wick and we'll wick up that extra solder from the solder pads Now the IC that I have to replace that one is a through hole, it's a dip, dual inline package. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wing the pins out and then snip them back so that I can apply them to the surface mount pad right here. Pair of needle nose and 
bend the leads out like that. There we go. Now we're going to cut the pins. Don't let those pins fall down onto that power board. <laughs> Be careful, people. You might make a short circuit. Okay. There we go. Now, pin one. It's going to go right there. Is that going to work? Looks like that will work. Okay. Let me get me some solder. set us an anchor point. Might get some thicker solder. It's a little bit too thin. It'll be good when we start to solder. But for setting an anchor point, we need to have a little bit more solder. It's not getting in the way of the camera. Get it? Okay, we're anchored in. Pull that back a little bit. Looks like we could go this way a little bit. Five, six, seven, and eight are soldered. Let's see if we can get this side. It looks like pins one, two, three, and four are soldered. I got these lights right here that can I can wrap around my forehead and point the light exactly where I want to see with the work that I'm doing. Okay, I said inspector work here. Make sure everybody's good and soldered down. Okay, it looks like I need to hit pin two again. I didn't quite get that one soldered to the pad. Okay, everybody is good to go. Kind of hard reaching over an IC and soldering to the other side. Just kind of put it back together and we'll see what we get in the display. Set glasses on. Make 
make sure I got the good connection here. Good. Let's put our insulator between the control board and the power board. Grab my two wooden blocks so that control board don't flop over. We'll hook up the display. There we go. Let's get close to that display and see what we get. Here we go. Wish us luck. Can't see in the dark. <laughs> what does it say? It says OH fault. <laughs> Can y'all see that? That's a very dim display. OH fault. The cycle power, make sure we get the same thing. Here we go again. OH fault. <laughs> I think y'all fixed it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to cycle power one more time. If we get OH fault, then we're good. We've got OH fault. <laughs> ah, alarm OH fault. 0, 0.00 hertz. Nice. Okay. I hope we can see that display. It is very, very dim. I wish I had a backlight on that thing. Before we get started, I'd like to make a correction on the OH alarm. Now I thought it was because the cooling fan was bad, the heat sink cooling fan was bad, but no. The motor thermal was not connected to the drive, and that's why the OH alarm was coming up. So the OH alarm is cleared when you connect the motor thermal or a jumper wire from the CS terminal to the SD terminal. And I jumped it out and that cleared the OH alarm. This drive will come up in the Japanese language. So in order to see the parameters if you want to look at them, we need to set this drive to English. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's turn the drive on. There's 220 applied to the terminals R, S, and T. Let's select PU. Press the PU button. And you can see that we're in Japanese. There's Japanese characters. Now press set. And there's a parameter 77 that enables or disables us the ability to change the parameters. So we need to set uh, parameter 77 first to enable us to uh, change parameters. So type 77, type read, and right now it's set to 1, so we're locked out of changing the parameters. Let's set that to 0, press 0, and write. Now we can change the parameters. Press set, type in 145, press read, 
and zero is the Japanese language. One is the English language. So enter one, press the right button. Now, let's go to set again. We're in English. We can read that. We can change the parameters <laughs> understanding what, what we're looking at. Now the drive will still run if it was in the Japanese language. But I can't read or write Japanese and I would not know what, uh, what I'm looking at when I'm scrolling through the parameters. There you go. That's how you go from Japanese to English. Now there's other languages that uh, that you can change it to. Let's see if I can find the, the list of, of uh, parameters that we can change it to. I wrote down here in the PDF. There they are. The languages are Japanese, that's per, uh, value zero. English is one. German is two. French is three. Spanish is four. Italian is five. Swedish is six. And Finnish is seven. You can set parameter 145 to any of those values to select the language that, that uh, you prefer. I'm going to power down. We're going to hook up a motor to this drive and we're going to run it. Connect the squirrel cage induction motor to the terminals U, V, and W. If I can get on it. There we go. There's U. and W. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> All right. Not failing on under voltage now. Folks, you fixed another one. Good job. Nice. 
There's a lot of satisfaction in fixing things. Y'all did good. Alright. Have a good day. We'll see you next time. Afternoon. I hope y'all's having a good day. We're not doing too bad here. After my brain dragging a 145-pound carcass around all day. <laughs> so let's talk about how we're going to get this Mitsubishi free roll drive to run. I have some extra connections here that that were not used in the drive. Uh, but I'm showing them because you might need to use them Now what I did was I've got a switch from STF that's start forward to The SD terminal right here And here is start reverse if you want to run forward you close this switch to SD if you want to run reverse you close this switch to SD. So either or. Imagine not both at the same time, just one or the other. Now I jumped with a piece of wire, a piece of jumper wire, RL to SD. And that's low, the, the preset low speed, the preset medium speed, and the preset high speed if you want to use them. You can jump those to SD. I show a switch right here. Now here, the CS terminal was programmed as the motor thermal. And that being disconnected, it, it was giving us the OH alarm. So if you jump the CS terminal to the SD terminal, that clears that motor thermal alarm, the OH alarm. Over here, this is a metal bar around P1 and P and to this terminal right here. And P is our DC bus. And from RX, this is built into the drive it's attached to the heat sink from RX to P. RX is the regenerative braking IGBT output. That's what turns on that regenerative braking uh, circuit. Attached to the RX terminal is a 40 ohm resistor connected to P. PRs are framed around. And N is the DC bus ground. You have a P1 terminal. If you want to, you can put an inductor out there, a choke, a power choke, to cut down on bus noise. This 40 ohm resistor attached to the heat sink, I couldn't see it, but I measured it from RX to this terminal right here. I imagine it's probably a 100 watt resistor. That's what I would use. 40 ohms at 100 watts. Here are the R, S, and T terminals. That is where you bring in the line that makes the DC bus to run that motor. So we have 220 volts AC three phase on R, S, and T. That makes us about a 310 volt DC bus. We also have R1 and S1 
R1 is connected to R. S1 is connected to S. These are metal bars that jump R to R1 and S to S1. R1 and S1, they power up the control. So you can have separate uh, 220 volts AC that powers up the DC bus and powers up the control. Here is UV and W. And I attached a 1.5 horsepower squirrel cage induction motor made by Baldor to UV and W. This is our motor that we ran. There you go. That is the connections to make that Mitsubishi inverter drive get up and go. All right. I gotta go in the backyard and feed the birds. <laughs> Water the chives. Now here in a little bit, as I do every year, if I can, I'm gonna have me a little garden in the backyard, a little trough garden where I grow chives and, and uh, basil and whatnot. I see a cardinal on the bird feeder. We gotta go and give them a little bit more food than that. It's almost empty. Oh, have a good night. We'll see you next time.